You're listening to the Fresh Start Podcast, fresh ideas for business and personal growth. I'm Dave Henning, and I'm very excited today to have my guest all the way from the Nashville area in Nashville, Tennessee, not far from there, actually, uh, Coach Steve Dunn. And Steve uh, actually was a scout for the Cleveland Cavaliers. He's been a, uh, he's actually from the San Francisco Bay Area originally and uh, coached some uh, teams at uh, Woodside High School. Uh, let's see, Santa Rosa State, is that right? And uh, Foothill College, some championship teams. Am I correct? Welcome, Steve. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. How are you? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm very energized to talk with you. We've got uh, some great things to share with our audience today. And uh, yeah, and you also coached in New Zealand. So tell us a little bit about uh, how you came to, to coaching and, and uh, your love of that, your love of players and, and actually uh, serving uh, the athletes at Stanford even. So how'd that all, uh, what's, your, what's your story? Well, I started coaching basketball very young. I was uh, either going to San Jose State University I had a basketball background at high school, Fremont and Sunnyvale, played for a really good high school coach. And early on, I figured I'd go into coaching. I, I enjoyed being around the gym, wasn't going to play professionally. It was kind of an average high school player, but I, I kind of looked at the game a little differently. And I, I um, so going to Stanford games or Cal games or Santa Clara games, I, I, I liked the culture of it. So when I was at San Jose State doing my undergrad, I just started um Work in basketball camps at San Jose State. Then I got my first high school job, moving out of high school as I had a lot of college and kind of worked myself up. And uh, I graduated. I was very, very fortunate to get the Woodside High School varsity job. Uh, that was a great job, great administration, excellent players, had a nice run. There. And then it led to coaching at Foothill College and Santa Rosa Junior College. And then worked myself up through there and, and then ended up in coaching in New Zealand of all places. Wow. So, wow. And at that time, I worked for the Cavaliers. Uh, I was there for three years working with them as their Australasia scout. So um, that's kind of how I went about my professional life. Now, we just want to clarify you, you, you never actually met LeBron James. Is that right? <laughs> you know, everybody asks me that. And I say, <laughs> well, I, and, I, and I don't give them a direct answer. I say, look, I, I, I'm an international scout. Um, I'm, I'm far removed from the big shots and the big time. So the answer is no, I don't actually know LeBron James. You know, he played on the team when I was there. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make a confession. As I get older, it'll be kind of sort of. Maybe when I'm 70s, it'll be yes. But right now, it's <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Selective memory, right? Selective memory. That's like right, I, right. I, I had to confess to some guy on a podcast the other day that I actually – Never did see Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock. We we got in our car and left before he played. So that's my confession to match up with your confession. Now, what was it like for you? Uh, I mean, you had some really you were the coach of the year in some cases. What, what was that all about? What how that happened? I mean, you're you're really good. I know you're modest. I know that for a fact. But tell me more. Well, I had some great players. I mean, when I was coaching in high school at Woodside and Skyline of Oakland. Um, I was very blessed to have just a great pool of talent. Uh, the guys bought in. So we, we had an excellent record in high school. And then I was in junior college. Uh, well, I was named coach of the year in high school one time. And then I was in junior college level, uh, pretty high level. So in my last team, I think we had nine division one players, both high majors, three of them went professional. So, I mean, the guys, we were really, really talented. And I think that that really – paves the way for those other awards like coach of the year or championship coach. So I have to give credit to where it's due and that's the talent level that we had. So I uh, just curious, uh, some of them went on to professional uh, basketball, any one in, or two in particular that stand out and, and uh, really, really make you proud. Well, they all make me proud. Even the ones that just ended up playing at any level. I mean, they're just, they're, I, I don't want to put one player ahead of the other, but you know, sure. we had a, I guess Robert Johnson, he, he ended up going to Oregon, played for Coach Ken, and then he played professionally overseas. Or Bejas Anaya, really proud of Bejas. He went and played over in Europe, Europe for a while. Um, DeAndre Walker, he was an excellent player for us, on, all on the same team. And he ended up playing for the Guam national team and professionally. So, I mean, there was we, we had a handful of guys. Obviously, they're extremely talented players. 
They've gone on to do some great things personally and professionally. I love them. I'm real proud of all of them. Very cool. Awesome. Uh, that's fantastic. So um, this is interesting. You shared with me that uh, working with the athletes at Stanford or re recruiting uh, that you actually were required to talk about this guy named Jesus to basketball players, although you really didn't know Jesus at that time personally. Uh, let me let me back up. I think we're a little confused there. I said I was talking about. Um, let me clean that up a tad bit. College basketball is extremely a church. It is very, very, quote, you'd say religious. High school, not, not so, even so much high school, but basketball in general is a very church profession, especially at the collegiate level. So when I was recruiting nationally at the junior college level, um, you know, I would use the word Jesus in church and I love God and all that just to get players. I knew I was a fake. But in my industry, you know, that's kind of what we did to get the moms and grandmas on board so they'd get us the player. And um, I didn't feel bad about it, really, at the time. I knew I was a little bit – I knew I was a hypocrite, but that's what I did. As far as Stanford, I was mentioning that when I started my coaching career, um, Coach Montgomery was coaching at Stanford, and I was just working in camp, and Coach Montgomery brought another coach in and he was talking to the student athletes and, and, and some of the younger coaches about the Bible and Jesus. I mean, I've kind of heard it before, but it, it's just kind of the industry. But it, it did resonate a little bit with me at that time. I was like, oh, that's interesting. This guy is actually legitimate. He's not a fake like I was. And so that uh, piqued your attention to consider a relationship with Jesus more than a religion. Uh, and uh, I was sharing with you earlier, it's ironic that I, I watched the replay of the famous uh, Moneyball movie with Brad Pitt, which is the, you know, as you know, the, the true story of the, of the, uh, of the uh, Oakland A's. And uh, the scene in there that reminded me of you when, was when the scouts and Billy Bean were going to these kids' houses and convincing them, hey, you need to play for, in fact, Billy Bean himself, you, you know, he had a scholarship to Stanford that he gave up to, you know, to play for the Mets. And uh, it reminded me of you getting out there and, and recruiting kids to play basketball. Is that kind of, uh, I mean, not exactly that same thing, but was that kind of the scenario when you actually had to go to, to, to students' homes and meet with their, their mom and their grandmas you are talking about? Yeah, it's similar. I mean, you're... Um you know, you're, first of all, you know he's an extremely talented player, all right? So these guys are usually very, very well accomplished. They're, they're high school stars. Um, and then so you're, you're recruiting against two or three other junior colleges or prep schools or even a low Division I school, and you're just trying to explain what the expectations are if they play for us. A little different at the junior college level, especially if it's non-scholarship because um, you're just mapping out a one or two year program to play for us. And you talk about at the academic side and you talk about for me, you know, I'm a married man and I, I, I go to church and all those things because you just want to sell the big package. Right. Mm -hmm. And at the time I'd go wow. to church. Uh, and the only reason I'd go to church because it would help me in the living room recruit players. That's how much of a fake I was. I mean, wow. Yeah. Kind of husband and dad at the time, but as far as the church element, when I'm in a living room, that was really just to recruit the player. So if you don't mind sharing, then, then having said that, uh, what was, let's say, your progression uh, in, in the faith to, to coming in terms with, with who you really were and, and uh, you know, what happened? Well, I'll break it up because this is really about your audience. I want to make sure that your audience understands that um, – at the end of this video, I, I put it in a booklet and they can get it for free. They can download it about right. not what happened to me, but what can help them. So I want them to stay with the video so they can download the book and get it for free. It's a short few steps that uh, it's a, it's not about me, the booklet, but it's, it's to help them about what I went through. So I'll probably answer your question in stages is, um, you know, my career uh, didn't go as planned, and I end up in New Zealand trying to relaunch my career. And if you looked at my 
lifestyle. So any of your listeners might resonate. This might resonate with them. Um, on the outside, it looked very, very good. I lived in a beautiful home close to the beach in New Zealand. I have a cute wife, four lovely children. Um, there's only, you know, 10 or 15 pro basketball coaches in New Zealand. My boss is the national coach at the time. I mean, so on the outside, I, I'm working for Cleveland at the time. I mean, things look pretty good. But internally, I'm not, I'm not doing so well. You know, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm, um, I'm not professionally where I want to be. You know, income's not where I want it to be. My ego's not where I want it to be. Um, I'm just not right inside. I'm stirring inside. And I, I've already tried to fill that void with the, what the world had to offer. So any of your listeners, it might be <laughs> alcohol. It might be status. It might be ego. It might be a, a porn addiction. I don't know whatever it is, right? Everyone has their stuff. And I'm not judging anybody for that. But you know, I've gone through the whole bit of trying to fill this emptiness inside uh, with maybe even religion or being a basketball coach, other gods. And, um, and it came to a head in about 2017. It wasn't that long ago where um, it was just, I kind of was at my last step and I just like, wait, wait a minute here. What? I, I got to get some things right. I mean, everything's falling on me at one time, not doing well. And then I kind of hit step one and I can probably go into that, but you might want to jump in and get some clarification on that. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, so step one, what do you mean by step one? Well, really here's a guy just, I'm miserable. All right. And, and, and I was, I was at unrest before that, but now it's, it's hit a point where I'm just miserable. I can't sleep. I'm have anxiety all the time. I'm just depressed. I'm just, and you looked at my outward appearance, you know, I still look like a coach that's got it all under control, right? Everything on the outside looks great. Uh, I'm, I'm hanging out where I should be hanging out even. I'm at pubs where I, should, you know, I'm a married guy. I'm not overly drinking or anything, but I'm just, just not right. So what happened was I just said, look, I remember back in the day I was given a little bit of advice about going to God. And I didn't know God at the time. Now, again, I, I knew a lot about God. If you heard me talk about God or the Bible, you'd think I'm pretty well versed. But I, that was just for my profession. I was like Samuel in the Bible. I knew a lot about God, but I had no relationship with God. Complete faith. Okay. Um, so I went out to the beach. I, I wrote everything down on some paper. And I just asked God, please help me. I don't know. I, and I didn't know at the time that God said, when you ask for help, and wisdom, he'll give it to you quickly and abundantly. I didn't know that at the time. Um, and I said, I, I wrote out everything of, you know, everything on my mind and my plate. I just wrote it out. I showed him the list even, uh, not to put a guilt trip on anyone that's listening or myself, but just what I did. Um, after that, I probably said my first real sincere prayer later that evening. And I said, God, I asked you to help me. There's probably some things in my life that you need to show me that I'm not you know, most of the stuff I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing or my heart's not in the right place, um, you know, show me uh, because I really want to know you. I, I, I have nothing else now. I'm just, it's me and you. Everything, the rest of my life is falling apart. I can't keep it together. And uh, I'm hanging on a thread in my marriage and my kids' relationships and my profession. It's So now it's just me and a God that created me. I don't know, you know, he loves me. I'm just all I have to hold on to. Fast forward a picture, God convicted me very, very quickly that he gave me uh, a piece that he heard me. And I wasn't looking for kind of a, an angel visitation or anything like that. But what he convicted me on was uh, my unforgiving spirit and how deep my anger. And I wouldn't say maybe hate. That's maybe a little strong word, but I, I guess you could use it a little bit. But my anger and unforgiveness toward others uh, and, and really, really holding on to unforgiving spirit towards other that have wronged me or I felt have wronged me. Um, and then I had a conviction of, well, okay, I asked God to help me and, uh, and I'm encouraging others and I didn't know God loved me. So I encourage your listeners to know the first thing I want to encourage you is that God does love you and particularly the men out there. He loves you very, 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 very much. I didn't know that. 
but you can go to them and make sure you ask for help. Once I did that, fast forward a little bit more, is um, he shed a light on my unforgiving spirit, but I, I kind of had a, a mindset of, hey, look, if I want to know about God, maybe I should go to some videos. And I went to YouTube videos and I started hearing, I went to Charles Stanley. That's like all I knew, right? I got kind of the, the basic bread and butter. I started listening to Charles Stanley services on YouTube, which led to some others like I Am Second, those videos, I Am Second, um, some Alistair Begg. And I'm just under hearing the word. I'm just trying to, Lord, I want to learn about you. And as he did that, I said, okay, maybe I should start to read a few Bible verses. And it, and it came to me in the Bible where it said, if you want me to hear you, Steve, you need to forgive. It said, go and forgive. And I didn't want to forgive. I was an angry guy and it became part of my identity. I even coached out of anger. And I needed to forgive, particularly my parents. And I had a hard time with those two things because the Bible said, and then honor my wife in all things. That's what the Bible told me. So your prayers are not hindered. And that about shook me. I was probably shaken when I read that. So I had God gave me some clear instructions that the is that I can have a relationship with him. However, what I need to do is forgive everyone, particularly my parents, and uh, I need to honor my wife in all things that my prayers to him are no longer hindered. And at the time when you're broken, and some of you are probably listening to this are at that point, and all you have to hold on to in life is God. That's all you have. You don't want it, your prayers hindered. You want to make sure that that relationship is, is you're connected. So with that process, you know, I, um, um, God in his great mercy quickly, very quickly gave me a piece about he heard me and he gave me wisdom abundantly and he convicted me on my unforgiving spirit and my anger towards many people. I mean, it was deep. Um, and not only my pride and my ego and those things, but, and then also that I really had to look at how I honor my wife. Now I can say this, that, and I'm not trying to point out anyone else's sins or mine or anything else, but I'm saying that, you know, I wasn't playing out on my wife. So I probably thought I was a pretty decent guy, but I probably could have been, if it wasn't for my own profession, how basketball coaches have to behave, that could have been my vice, right? Could have been, or, or, or drugs or, or, but mine was, really wrapped up in myself. I mean, I was, uh, I was the God of myself. I was the, and my wife would say the church is Steve, the church of Steve. Uh, and uh, so I had to really look at how do I honor my wife with my speech in my eyes and my um, tone, how I treat the children, um, how I treat others, all those things. Cause I didn't want my prayer centered anymore. So I encourage your listeners if you want a quick, quick, quick change, go to the Lord, ask for help. Ask for help and then forgive and honor your wives in all things. Your life will change very, very quickly. Will not be perfect, but you'll be at peace. And that's really what I was thinking. I thought I was thinking money and success and fame and ego and all those other things. And those are nice, but it was really, I was seeking peace with God. I didn't want to walk around as a hypocrite anymore. And um, so it was just amazing. So my life changed pretty dramatically. And then I, about a year later, it was, I was actually where you were and it was at the Marriott hotel and I was praying to the Lord and it, it just, it just realized he does love me. He loves me very much. And I, and I, I don't think even in the church, we get that enough about how much God does love us. He loves men out there and he wants to have a really good relationship, but he wants us to forgive and he commands us to forgive. And he wants us to honor our wife or our future wife in all things. So our prayers to him were hindered and you will be at peace relatively quickly. You know, there's a great verse in 1 John that says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us 
of all unrighteousness. As you said, that doesn't mean we're perfect. And people get hung up on that word sin, but it's actually an old, old Latin word, which means missing the mark. So if you can imagine an, on an archery field with a big target and you're shooting arrows and you're, you're never hitting the bullseye because you need to be forgiven and cleansed, and he's standing by ready to do that. Another misunderstanding that a lot of churchy people have, and if, forgive me if, uh, if this is too painful <laughs> to hear, but uh, in, in the, uh, the, the book, the big book says, um, the wages of sin, the paycheck for sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who created us for good works. The point being, it's a, it's a gift. We can't like add on to it like, um, well, you know, I sang in the church choir. I, I, I didn't, I had perfect attendance. Uh, my parents were uh, Christians. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a free gift. And so it's like an insult to say, it's kind of like uh, you get a big Christmas present under your Christmas tree and, and, uh, and you say, oh, thank you so much for the for this Christmas gift, uh, how much? How much can I? Money can I give you? You know, back in appreciation. No, that's not the deal. It's totally free. Would that be your experience, Coach? Yeah, it is. It, it's interesting. When I came back to the United States, I reconnect with lots of my coaches that I know in the in fraternity and players, and they're asking, "Hey, Coach, you know what? What happened to you? What? What? What do you?" Because they want to talk about LeBron, right? I don't want to talk. About, I want to talk about what God did in my life. But I, I think you're spot on. And and I, I, I really want to encourage the listeners or others now. What I say is like, you go to the Lord. The Bible tells us when one comes to the Lord to repent or ask for to know him, even the angels in heaven are rejoicing. It's not that somebody is it walks with the Lord yet. It's that somebody, and I didn't know. I had no idea when I went to that beach that day. Uh, and I was in, in my house. It was, it was kind of a one-hour process. That when I said, hey, Lord, I know you're God. Everyone knows there's God. I don't know you, and I want to know you. I'm, I'm really asking for, for wisdom. Now, with that comes a conviction of my lifestyle, and I, I told him all those things. But um, it was his love and his grace that he gave me, and the peace in that is, uh, that was really missing in my life. I already felt horrible. I mean, I felt like a loser already. I mean, you know, I've messed up. My whole life is a mess, right? Join the club, everybody else, right? Our lives are messy, okay? We're not God. But we, we miss the major piece is that he loves us and we can come to him and he will give us wisdom. And he says he will give us peace abundantly and quickly. So, um, and it is free. We don't have to earn it. I like how you explained it, like what you said in stages, because you were sitting up here at the Marriott on El Camino in Mountain View at 51 years old before you came to this point. And it was literally stages. And I, and I hear what you're saying, encouraging men to just begin by asking help and realizing that you need help. So, uh, and the point that, you know, you're a really old man now, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the fact that you can come to to know Jesus Christ with a relationship that is not a religion uh, at any age. Uh, I actually uh, uh, baptized a man at my church years and years ago who was actually uh, in his 80s. He had been coming to church with his wife for years, who was a devoted believer. He He wanted to be with his wife, but he never really made that, uh, quote, leap of faith, as Soren Kierkegaard, it's a leap into the light, not a leap into the dark, until he was in his 80s. And I was, I was actually uh, blessed to, uh, to be honored to, to baptize him at that time. So um, thank you for breaking this down, if you will, in, in actual uh, stages. And your, uh, your free YouTube, it's, it's called, you have a booklet on Amazon, and it's called, it's called Time Out. Rethinking Your Life Strategies. Did I get that right? That's right. A Weekend of Encouragement with Coach Stone. I put it. I put the steps in a weekend because I wanted to give everyone encouragement. Hey, don't wait. 
God, no matter what, it, you're out in some unrest or God's isolated you, you're going through a tough time, or you just feel like you're not walking like you should be, go to the Lord. You don't need a pastor or a, or a bishop or any, or <laughs> just go to the Lord and ask him. He loves you for help and for wisdom. And the weekend process, um, I think, will be great encouragement for you. Yeah, and um, coming to faith is not like just fire insurance, if I can say it that way, where it's a very hot place. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I heard a, a funny song years ago, uh, God and Son Incorporated, serving nice folks like you for over 2,000 years. <laughs> He's there. He's there for, for all of us, and especially men in this time when, um, you know, we've got all kinds of challenges and issues in, in today's society. And you said something, uh, just going back real quickly, you talked about, you, call, you actually called yourself the king of anger, and it was, and it was mainly directed at your parents, and you, you mentioned that your father had already passed away, your mother was elderly, even then you had to forgive them and everybody else and forgive yourself. Yes, it, it, it started, well, back to the booklet. They can download the booklet on YouTube or they can go to Amazon. I guess they could buy it for five bucks or they can get the Kindle for free as well. One of the things, it's a ministry, it's an outreach, right? So, sure. so you can get it for free or you could, you could buy the hard copy for, I don't know, four or five bucks or so. Uh, but yes, back to the king of anger. Um, relatively quickly, when I asked God to help me, and, um, and with that, I said, please forgive me, was part of the, the same conversation. You know, I, I kind of poured out my heart to him because I had nothing left, right? Um, it was really within hours about, you know, here I am asking him, I have my scroll. You know, I have hurt people and I've, and um, that I'm not proud of, right? And I lived the life that I'm not proud of and, and it's many times. And um, I relatively quickly realize God put on my heart, my unforgiveness towards others. I've asked them to give me wisdom. I've asked God to help me. He's going to help me. He promises. I've asked to forgive me. And relatively quickly, it was like, well, you have a lot of anger towards other people, even borderline hate. And uh, you're right. It was most of it was towards my parents. I've actually caught a few YouTube videos of other people talking about that. And it was after I had this conviction about my dad's been passed away for almost 20 years. I'm still upset at him. My mother is in her 80s, and I have an anger streak towards that, and, and not to mention others. And so I had to really go to the Lord and, say, and, and lay that down, just lay down that anger and just be and forgive. And along with that, it was maybe about a month later, I read about honoring my wife and all things so God would hear my prayer. And um. I've been at peace, not a perfect life by any means, but I've been peace. I've been at peace ever since and dropping the anger. And the wow, that is. So I encourage all your listeners, forgive their mother and forgive their father. Drop all the anger towards your parents and your loved ones. And um, things will, your life will change within hours. And Adam, it's not too late. It's never too late. Um, one of the... Interesting things I ran across actually earlier this month was an entire in Nashville, not far from you, at the Ryman, Ryman Auditorium, which was a big church tabernacle originally, um, uh, was it was two days of speakers and singers giving stories about forgiveness in their life. They had from noon to midnight, Monday and Tuesday, uh, at live from the Ryman, it was uh, broadcast. It's on YouTube. You can find it. People telling you stories. And one of the most interesting stories was a guy named Russ Taff, who, when he was 22 years old, was invited to come to Nashville and enjoy, join this famous Imperials Gospel Quartet. But um, Russ ran into a huge problem with alcoholism. And it, it goes all the way back to his father, who was a local preacher who got who, who would get drunk and got fired from his church and his, and became very mean and Russ just had this anger towards his dad for many many years and he just tells the story his personal story of how 
uh, even going out on the road and singing gospel songs in front of thousands and thousands of people, um, how he had to come to this point of forgiving his father and forgiving himself and turning his, his life back around. Ironically, uh, I was at my very first uh, morning drive DJ show in Kansas City when we were hosting a big uh, Christian music day at the theme park, and I had the honor of introducing the Imperials on stage to about 10,000 people, which means nothing more than I happened to be a coincidence at the time. But the reason I tell you that, Coach, is I posted that on YouTube, and a, and a, a, a lady that I know that I've worked with in the past somewhere else, uh, she sent me a little uh, message on Messenger and said, uh, Dave, I really appreciate what you, what you put on there about Russ, because I went to the cemetery after that and to my father's grave, and I had to forgive my father for all that he did to me years ago. And I was just blown away that the things we do and the things we say have an eternal impact. And I pray that that is exactly your message today will have that eternal, eternal impact. And I truly believe it will because it's not too late. It's not too late to turn to God and change. Uh, what do you say to that? Well, I think it's fantastic. And, and for those dads out there, I mean, I just want to maybe piggyback on what you said. When I, when I was convicted uh, to my own four kids, I, I went and apologized to them. And it wasn't so much I was concerned about that. I for, it, it was me apologizing that healed the relationships that were strained to some degree because I was an absent father. I was gone recruiting 24-7 and basketball was my God. So winning was my obsession or not losing, right? or money or whatever it might be. Um, I was concerned that they needed to forgive. It, it, it wasn't so much me, the healing of me saying, I apologize. It was, I wanted to make sure uh, one of them's married now. And, and I wanted to make sure before he was married, he didn't have any anger towards his dad because that will blow up a marriage. Now I might be overstepping a little. I don't think I am, but based on my discussions with a lot of coaches, my age, I work in a, the men's field. Um, most marriage relationships are having trouble or lots of issues. It's because the two have not laid out their anger towards their parents. Once they forgive their parents, they're going to have a great relationship. I've talked to many guys in counseling for years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years, and I'm not anti-counseling. But, and the counselor has never brought up the issue is your anger and your unforgiveness towards your parents. And once they let on their anger towards their parents, marriage, money. So I encourage those that are struggling in their marriage and ones that have children, making sure your children have forgiven you because there's no perfect dad and no perfect mother. We try our best, but we have our isms. And, you know, we want to make sure those kids have forgiven us for that just like our father in heaven has forgiven us and wants to have a relationship with us. But yes, back to what you were saying. Yeah. Most people are looking to, for their fathers and they want to have a strong relationship with their father. And once someone returns to their father, like I returned to my father in heaven, uh, you'll be at peace. And one of the strongest things that Jesus ever said was my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. So the world is looking for, for peace in society today, all around the world, all around this country right now. And yet that peace is not found anywhere else except that this private brand, this secret sauce, uh, that's a horrible way to say it. But Jesus says, my brand of peace, my type, my style of peace. It's a whole different feeling when you are at peace with yourself and with your God. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, you, you hit it right on. I mean, I know that you, there, you know, people, do, uh, myself, I'm just talking about myself or, or others, you know, we try to find peace in other things that the world has to offer. Okay. And I've tried everything the world has to, uh, to, my, to my own shame. Okay. And, and, and now you'll see people try to find in different causes, right? Save the whales, whatever it is, it's their passion, whatever it is. It's like, no, I'm running away from what it really is all about is there is only peace 
with my relationship with Jesus. And I, that's where we only find peace. There's no peace other than that. So we, we, when we go to the Lord and ask for wisdom, he will, he, he will give you wisdom and he will bring and the peace will follow. It's funny that you mentioned that. My mind goes in all different directions because Jonah was running away and he ended up with a, with a whale basically uh, barfing him up on the shore because he, he was running away from God and wanted, didn't want to obey. His God gave him, look, this is, your, this is where you're supposed to be heading this way and you ran that way and, uh, you, you know, you, you, miss, you, you know, he was an angry guy. He was all angry about the whole thing. And yet, and yet, um, you know, there's somebody that kind of gives us, gives us hope and a direction to well, follow. I, I told you this last time, uh, I think we talked yesterday, is it quite interesting. My first book, I was finishing a book on a little bit John Maxwell or Pat Riley, a book's on leadership and right. all these different cute stories. It's actually my favorite book I wrote, and I'm reading it. And, of course, when you're in basketball, you put a little Bible verse in each chapter or right. by Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, I love the book. And here I'm writing a book on leadership. Um, and, and if I look back on it, I was just avoiding the real issue. Again, I'm trying to virtue signal to the world about Steve's a smart guy and there's some good pointers in here and how you have these are good life skills and all. It was great. And at the end of the book, I told you that I was miserable. God at that time was like, no, you can publish a book. You can talk about life skills to other people. You can mentor men. You can go find another cause and pick, pick it in front of an abortion center, whatever. That does not bring peace. What you need to do is come to me and I will give you wisdom. That is so powerful. I'm speaking with Coach Steve Dunn out of the Nashville, Tennessee area. He's a, he's a child of the Silicon Valley here, right down the road, actually. And it has been such a joy to share this message with you. And I want to reiterate, tell us again, if you would, please, how to find this, this booklet that you wrote specifically for men to come to grips with their anger, frustration, uh, concerns, um, you know, uh, depression, anxiety, to find that peace that you found. Uh, tell us again the name of the booklet, where we can find it, and where they can get it for free. You can go to Amazon, and um, they can find the book, Time Out. Um, I can't even remember the name now. You got me so fired up. This is <laughs> Rethinking Your Life Strategies. Life Strategies, a weekend of encouragement. They can go to Amazon and find it on Amazon about four dollars and they can download it on kindle for free i also put the audiobook on youtube under coach dunn one word c-o-a-c-h-d-o-n-e it's one word they can just type in that on on uh, youtube and i put it on audiobooks you can also download it listen to it while you're driving it's about 30 minutes all up and if you ever want to email me a question through youtube just do that i'll try to get back to everybody the main thing i just want to reemphasize is that god loves you very much you men out there or you young men he wants to have a relationship with you and you can go to him but make sure ask for help and uh i hope the booklet uh, is uh you find value in that as well coach i really appreciate you spending time with me today and uh, we are excited and anxious and encouraged greatly to get this word out to to everybody in our audience Thanks so much for being with me. My guest is Coach Steve Dunn. I'm Dave Henning, Fresh Start Podcast, Fresh Ideas for Business and Personal Growth. Hope this has been a blessing to, uh, to our audience as it has been to me speaking with you today. Thanks so much. Thank you.